we've decided to hang up our traditional bikes that we normally would travel with in the RV and now we're gonna do the e-bike thing. It's something we've been thinking about for a while and maybe it's something that you're considering as well. E-bikes are just a lot of fun to ride. <laughs> we've been out more riding than we ever have with our traditional bikes and it's a great way to get out and explore the area where you're in or you know we use it to go scout new campsites and stuff like that too. It really removes a lot of the obstacles that might have been there that'll keep you from going out for a ride on a traditional bike. Like you don't have to worry about encountering a bunch of hills, you know, whether you're gonna be on paved road versus gravel road or dirt road. You can just jump on your e-bike and go out and have a good time. Now as a newbie uh, e-bike owner, there's a lot of stuff that I wanted to figure out. Of course I wanted to figure out how everything worked, but also I wanted to find out firsthand, you know, what it's really like riding this bike. You know, what's it like going uphill? How fast can I go? You know, how far can I go? Can I still get a workout on this e-bike? You know, what's it like folding up and storing and transporting? You know, we uh, spent a lot of time with both of these bikes. You know, Melissa has been riding primarily the, the step through and I've been riding the, uh, the standard bike. And we can share a lot of stuff about, you know, what are the differences between these two models and which one might work best for you. You know, there are some pros and some cons that I'll talk to you about. I've had a lot of folks that uh, have tried these bikes since we've been traveling around, friends and other folks that have wanted to try it. I've run through just quickly showing them how to use the bike and get out riding for the first time and it just takes like a minute or two and I want to go through the same thing with you. So let's start there and then we'll go through all those tests and things, tell you all about e-bikes and hopefully it helps you uh, make a decision whether it's something that you want to do. So this is what the uh, bike looks like when it's in its uh, fetal position. <laughs> this is actually how it arrives in the box and it's fully assembled. So just a couple steps is all it takes to uh, get it expanded and ready to ride. Let me show you. I'm gonna rotate it around this pivot point here. And then once it's in place, I'm gonna lock this lever down. And then the other piece that needs to rotate is the handlebars and there's a locking latch there. And I'm gonna put down my kickstand. And the last thing is to flip the pedals out. And there you go. Now inside here is where the battery that powers the bike is located. Now when it arrives in the box, it, I've noticed uh, both of mine were charged up to about 50%, a little bit more. So it's gonna have some charge in it. And it comes with a couple of keys. So the key actually goes in the battery in the bottom here at a slight angle. And then to turn it on, you just switch it to this forward front and back position and the key won't fall out at that point. It's locked in there. So now the battery is engaged and, and you're okay to turn on the control. Now before you head out on a long ride, you're gonna to wanna to charge the battery up to 100%. And you're also gonna to wanna to put a little bit of air in the tire, or at least check it. Uh, it'll take up to 30 PSI, and I've been keeping mine between 25 to 30. But you can use a, a regular bicycle pump. It has a standard uh, Schrader valve here, and just pump it up and you'll be ready to go. Now you should be ready to step into the bike and make a few adjustments. Now you need to adjust the seat and the handlebars to uh, your comfort level. Now I recommend that you start with your seat a little bit lower when you first start out if you've never ridden an e-bike before. And then just get to a comfortable position where you can still have your feet easily on the ground and can come to a complete stop without any trouble and get off the bike and get back on again. Now as you uh, ride more, you may want to increase the height and if you're going to be pedaling, you, know, you should be able to get a maybe a full leg extension here on the pedals. But to start with, start at a little bit lower position. Okay, there's no need to be intimidated because this is an e-bike. Because the thing to remember is that first and foremost, this is a bike. It's got pedals and it's got uh, a gear shifter. You just go up and down. and it's got brakes. So this is our rear brake and this is our front brake. So we can actually ride this just like a regular bicycle. Now the e-bike controls are here on the handlebar. On the left hand side by your left hand, there's a controller that has three buttons on it. There's a power button right here 
and it has a plus and a minus. And we're going to control our pedal assist modes using that plus and minus. And the other control here is a little throttle that's located on the inside of your right handle. So just by twisting that, you'll be able to apply the, the motor uh, when you need it. Now to power it on, we're just going to hold down the power button and you should see the screen come to life. Now if we look at the screen, we can see we've got a speedometer and it's got our pedal assist level which is set to zero and our odometer readings just shows how many miles we've gone and at the very top you can see how much uh, how much power, how much battery capacity is, is remaining in your battery. Right now we're showing a hundred percent so we're fully charged. Now our pedal assist mode is going to be controlled by these plus and minus buttons on your left hand and it's set to zero and that's the default so that's basically no e-bike functionality. At zero, now the motor's not going to kick in. You can ride it just like a regular bike. Now we're going to go up to one, all the way up to five. Five is the fastest, and one is going to be just a little bit of assist. So while you're pedaling, and you're at uh, pedal assist one, then you'll feel the, uh, the motor kick in a little bit as soon as you start pedaling. Now the faster you go, if you start going up hills and stuff, you want to up that to a pedal assist 2, and then maybe 3, and then you can always bring it back down to 1. Now at any point, if you want to stop the motor, you can just hit the brakes, either one of the brakes, and the motor will disengage until you start pedaling again. Well, I found that in using the gears and in using the pedal assist, um, it's been really easy to control. When I'm holding the handlebars and like reaching over with my thumbs, they're, they're right there in reach. It's been really easy. I've only had to glance down just a little bit to be able to adjust anything. The screen is really easy to see. Yeah, it's very comfortable. I actually find it a little bit easier than a traditional road bike. <laughs> So yeah, I, I like it. I like the ease of use and being able to make those adjustments. Now you can use the throttle at any time as well while you're pedaling or if you're at a complete stop to get going. You just turn that a little bit and as long as it's at a pedal assist one or greater, the throttle will kick in and you'll get a little bit of that boost. Throttle's the one thing that kind of has thrown me a little bit. <laughs> I've tried to use it, um, it because it gives you that little bit of push when you're going, little additional, it's like, it's right here. I've actually not been sitting down all the way when I've tried the throttle, just to kind of give me a little bit of help when I start. And it's like, <laughs> so I think that it's just be mindful when you're using it. Make sure you're actually on the bike and seated and ready to go. And once you figure that out, it actually is nice because say you're on like a, just a little bit of an incline somewhere, you want to get going and you don't want to have to kind of get up and pedal before the assist really kicks in. You could just give it a little throttle. It'll move you just a little bit so you can start pedaling and then that assist kicks in and you go. So I like it. So this bike does come with a, a headlight and a tail light. So if you press the positive button and hold it down, you'll see this comes on here and it just turned on your headlight and your tail light. To turn it off, hold it down again, and there it goes. Now you can really start to have a lot of fun with the with this e-bike. You know, once you start getting familiar with how to use the pedal assist and the throttle and when to use them, and it, you really start to see the difference between an e-bike and a traditional bike, especially when you're riding along and you come upon a hill. So my favorite part of this bike, honestly, is the assist. And when it's my favorite is when there's a really steep hill. <laughs> We've done that a few times now, and that's pretty amazing. When you kick it up a few notches and you go trucking up that hill and you're just casually riding and up you go and you haven't really had to put in a whole lot of effort. For me, I found that pedaling at low gears, like if you're just trucking up a hill and pedaling, a pedal assist too is perfectly fine, and it's just enough to get you up that hill without having to uh, exert too much energy. But as you start uh, going faster and increasing your gears, then you know I usually bump it up to maybe a pedal assist three, and you start trucking along a little faster. But using the pedal assist modes on hills, it really flattens out those hills and makes the whole experience much more enjoyable. 
Well, we've got some nice equipment installed on this bike, even though it's considered uh, an entry-level folding e-bike. We've got the standard stuff, which is a, like a rear hub motor. It's a 500-watt motor, perfectly adequate. And we've got a seven-gear transmission. It's a Shimano a shifter and derailleur back here. And what I like is that we've got a nice little uh, metal guard around the derailleur back here, so it just protects it in case the bike lays down or anything like that. Uh, front and rear fenders, which is really nice if you're riding on wet roads or if you go through a puddle or something, it's not going to end up all over you. Got a nice little luggage rack on the back. Uh, this has mounting points on the front if you want to attach some of the accessories and also has some mounting points back here on the luggage rack for the optional bin and stuff that you can get. Now a couple of the features that are really unique to this model is, first of all, it has uh, the fat tires, it's 20 inch rim, but it has a three inch wide tire as opposed to the typical four inch wide tire. And I found that to be fine. Uh, we've ridden on all kinds of different roads and terrain and the three inches is great. And it's also great on the road. And it seems to be pretty easy to control. It has mechanical disc brakes on the front and rear. So it stops pretty well. And we've also got a front suspension on this bike. Now these are like shock absorbers on the front tire. So as you are uh, hitting bumps and things like that, it's gonna cushion the front of the bike and make it a much more relaxing and enjoyable ride. But they're also adjustable. So if you're heading off-road, you can adjust these to, to give you the most cushion and it's gonna make that, uh, that experience across the rocks and irregular terrain a lot more enjoyable. But if you're gonna be on the road, you can stiffen that up a little bit. So it's nice having that adjustability and you can even just set it right in the middle and that works too. And I've tested this and it seems to work pretty well. So for a thousand bucks, you know, you really got a nice bike here with all the essential uh, components here. Plus, you've got a nice front suspension too. Now I found that uh, once you get off the pavement with this bike, you still have a lot of stability and you know, it gives you a lot more confidence. You know, when you hit that shoulder and you're on the gravel and you have these thicker tires that can, that can handle those situations easily. We also uh, camp a lot in remote areas. So most of the time we're on dirt roads and trails and you know, we just wanna go out and explore, not really knowing you know, what type of terrain we're gonna encounter. So having the thicker tires, these three inch tires, and the uh, front suspension here, we feel confident handling those situations much better with this bike. So we've taken these bikes out on pavement, on gravel, dirt roads, roads with potholes, rutted, and I tell you what, I have felt confident on this bike in all of those conditions, um, typically on either a road bike or even a hybrid bike. I've, I've never felt 100% stable. I've been a little bit nervous. And on this bike so far, I have felt completely confident, comfortable, haven't felt like I was unstable at all. Normally when we're riding on mostly paved roads, I'll keep these inflated up to like 28, even up to 30 uh, PSI, which is the max. But when we're off-road, I'll air them down to say 25 or 22 to 25 PSI. And you know, with that plus the, the shock absorbers here, you can get through a lot of different situations. And it's not a mountain bike by any means, uh, but it handles it quite well. Now, comparing these two models of the XP, there are two main differences uh, between these bikes that may influence your decision as to which one to get. The first one's kind of obvious, and it's that whole step-through uh, feature. It just raises my level of confidence to be able to get on and off the bike very quickly, especially if I have to come to a quick stop. Um, it's easy to get my leg up and over where um, the other bike, it's, I'm 5'5", five five, so the other bike, it's, I really have to kind of hike up my leg to get up and over it, but this one I can easily get on and get off, and I feel comfortable with that. So another big difference between these two models that we didn't uh, actually realize at first was how different they are in terms of their clearance from the ground. You know, I assumed that they were going to be the same height, even though we have the step through, but they're actually not. If you were to measure the lowest point 
of the standard electric XP over there, it's about five inches. Whereas the uh, lowest point here on this step through, because it sits lower to the ground, makes it more accessible. So it's like three and a half inches. Now that's probably not gonna be an issue if you're just riding on the road, but if you get off road or get into some uneven terrain and maybe a little pitted uh, road or something like that, you need to be aware of that because you could you know, keep your pedal down and you could actually bottom out in some places. So if you want more clearance, you're gonna to wanna to go with the standard model. But if you're okay with a little bit lower to the ground feel, uh, probably gonna be riding more on pavement, then this will work out just fine. Now I've had no trouble uh, getting the bike up to 20 miles per hour, which is what it's been pre-programmed for, but the bike will actually go up to 28 miles per hour, but uh, in order to get that speed, you're gonna have to, uh, to reprogram it. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. To get into the settings, we're gonna hold down the plus and minus together on the controller, and now we're gonna hit the power button to cycle through till we get to program setting number eight. Five, six, seven, eight. We can see here it's set to 32 kilometers. It's got two settings in here. It's got 100, which is max speed, which is what you want, and the other settings 32 kilometers. Kind of confusing, but we want to set it to 100, which is going to be the maximum speed, and we're going to hold down the power until it stops blinking, and it's set, and now we can press the plus and minus again to get out. And finally, just we're, we're going to turn it off and then turn it back on again. And then that max setting is uh, set. All right, now let's take it for a spin and uh, see if we can hit 28 miles per hour. So I headed up to pedal assist five and uh, seventh gear and I really wasn't able to get much past uh, 25 miles per hour so I'm gonna keep going and see if I can do better. You know, these bikes have a 48 volt battery which is located in this area of the bike and I like to keep them charged up, you know, to full whenever possible, whenever they're just sitting. And I just use the, the charger that comes with the bike. Now there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, the one way that I like to do it is actually to just plug it into the side of the bike when we're not using it and then charge it up that way. And if you want to, you can even monitor the voltage level as it charges through the display here by hitting the uh, power button a couple times till you get to the voltage reading and you'll see that voltage uh, slowly uh, step up you know till, till it hits uh, I don't know what 52 volts or something like that and you know that's going to be a full charge and you can also see the little battery meter at the top increase as well. When you plug in the charger you'll see that when it's charging the little light on the charger is red and then when it turns green, that means the battery is fully charged. And then you can just disconnect the charger and unplug it at that point. That's usually the easiest way to do it. I mean, the other way is to actually remove the battery from the bike and you can charge it that way. You take the key and you need to move it all the way past the unlock point and it releases this locking pin right here. And then once that's released, you remove the key and then you can slide the battery out. Now once it's uh, out of the bike, you can plug it in to the charging port on the side of the battery and then recharge it that way. And then putting the battery back is basically the whole thing in reverse. You insert the battery back in the bike and you get the key and you actually turn it again and, and then it locks the battery back into the frame of the bike and then you can close it up and you're ready to ride again. I found the whole process of removing the battery all the time to recharge it is kind of a pain in the butt. So most of the time I charge it with the battery in the bike. Now one important thing to uh, point out here is that with the step through and the standard XP uh, 2.0, the battery 
uh, shapes on the ends are actually different. So you can't interchange these batteries. So if you're thinking that I'm getting two of these bikes and I can use uh, one battery in the other bike, it's not true. You can't do that. But that's just the way it is. Now with your battery at a full charge, you know, the total distance that you can go in the, in the bike is really going to depend on how you ride the bike and what type of terrain you're on. If you're going to pedal and you're going to you know, be pedaling most of the time and just using the pedal assist at a level two, you're going to go a lot further than if you're going to basically use the throttle most of the time and ride it more like a moped. The, the specs on the bike are like 30 miles to 40 five miles and that depends on you know how you use the bike now if you're going to be encountering a lot of hills you know your bike's going to be working a little harder as well so all of that uh, is going to draw more energy from your battery now i found that uh, while i'm pedaling even if i'm going up a hill i can look at the the amps so the current draw on the uh, the display here and i noticed that while i'm pedaling i can keep my current to like two between zero and say six amps now when i'm not pedaling going that same route if i just use my throttle that goes from like 10 to 15 or 18 amps now heading out for a long distance ride with just the pedal assist and you know pedaling most of the way you know you can really squeeze a lot of distance out of a full charge on this bike all right, we're gonna head out on about a 20 mile bike ride. Uh, battery's fully charged and it's a familiar route, but uh, there's some hills in there, so expect some climbing and, and some coasting. So I'm gonna keep it at about a pedal assist two and we'll check in at the halfway point and see where we're at. I'm sitting at about uh, 14 and a half miles in right now. I hit uh, 10 miles and that was where I was going to turn around. But then I looked at, I've been watching the battery gauge and it's been holding steady pretty close to a, a full charge. So I was pretty excited about that. But it dropped down maybe a bar or two towards that uh, last couple of uh, hills coming up. But then, you know, once I leveled off, it, uh, it jumped right back up. The battery's holding on pretty well, you know, at 15, almost 15 miles in, and the ride's been really good. But I'm gonna uh, turn around now. I kind of ran into this little park area, so I figured it'd be a good place to stop and uh, have a little snack and turn around and head back. Okay, I uh, just wanted to give you a heads up that uh, while I was uh, sitting here having a snack, drinking some water, uh, the display here timed out, and that was kind of a bummer because I wanted to show the total uh, miles for this little test. They're just gonna have to trust me, I guess. <laughs> yeah, kind of a bummer, but uh, whatever, let's go. <laughs> it's a pretty good ride. I'm down about 50% uh, on the battery and I went about 30 miles total so not too bad and it was a pretty enjoyable ride. Now being that these are folding e-bikes you have a lot more options for actually storing and transporting them. You know you can fold them up but you could also uh, just use a bike rack. Now the bike folds up in a couple different places. The first one is the, the handlebars. It pivots right here and this main pivot point here, this big hinge. Once I release the kickstand, I'm gonna grab this handle here, which is <laughs> nice to have this right here, and the neck on the bottom. And then I'm just gonna lift it up and let it kind of fold out. I also like to have a bungee cord handy because once you start carrying this around, it gets a little awkward to handle so having a little bungee to kind of keep things from spreading apart I just kind of anchor it on the on the rack here and 
you know, wherever I can so that it keeps the bike together and doesn't want to come open while you're carrying it around. What's nice too is it has this little bracket at the bottom which helps protect some of the equipment on the other side when it's in this folded position. The other bike also folds up in the exact same way. Put my handlebars down, fold that, unlock this section here, just lift it up and let it kind of unfold like that. And there you go. I want to move my pedals a little bit so they're not dragging on the ground. And yeah, I'll also probably put a bungee on this one as well. I did find that it's uh, it's kind of awkward to handle these things when they're folded up like this. So, you know, having the bungee around it helps you keep it from kind of unfolding while you're carrying it around. But uh, one tip is that uh, is that you can use a, a big plastic tote, like a 50 gallon big tote. And one of these will actually fit in there nicely. And if you get one with wheels, then, you know, you can just roll it around and it makes it a lot easier to move uh, one of these bikes in and out of a vehicle. Oh, and one other tip is that you might want to keep some of the packing material uh, that came with the bike in the box because it really helps to be able to kind of put a little bit of cushioning in between some of these components. Helps protect the bike and things around it. Well, so far these bikes have been uh, pretty reliable and, you know, we haven't had many complaints with, you know, how they've been packaged and how they operate. And that's an issue that I want to talk about because, you know, what happens when something goes wrong? You know, do you, is there somebody to contact? And I did have one issue that I had to reach out to Electric about and, you know, they're located in Arizona. So, you know, they're local here in the United States and they've been very responsive. But I was having a problem with the display, you know, when I was doing my initial testing, when I first started using it, it would show a code uh, on the screen here, like a 010 uh, code, and it was some sort of communication error. And I wasn't able to resolve it, but I reached out to them and they quickly uh, responded and and said that it was the controller, it was some issue with some early pre-release uh, version of the software in here. Just this model, not the step through. And they sent me out a new controller and I replaced it and everything worked. I do see that the odometer has been reset. So I've already got a bunch of miles on it, but so it just starts at zero. All right, well, it seems like we are good to go. Everything's fixed. So I was really happy with how they handled that situation. You know, being able to have somebody to call, somebody that's going to respond and provide good support is real important. Electric e-bikes, the company has been really great to work with. They've been really friendly and responsive and helpful throughout this whole process. And I'm really happy with that experience. Well, you may have noticed that we've got a couple of the optional accessories installed on our bikes that electric send us to to test out and one of them is this uh this comfort seat it's basically a bigger seat that's got more cushion it's wider and it's got this little shock absorber in the neck so in the stem so it gives you a little bit more cushion a little cushy for the tushy and it's <laughs> it's been really comfortable and really nice to have on those uh long rides especially but you know there are other uh, third-party aftermarket uh, pieces that you can get to just like this but this is the electric one so it's electric now the other one is the the mirror kit a mirror package and we've got one here and one here the package comes with two mirrors and it's designed to have one on either side like it's for one bike but what we've done here if you have two bikes you only need to get one package and what i did here is i installed this one here on the step through in the normal position here on the left because you really only need it on the left you know so you can see traffic coming and then the other one the one that i ride mostly i actually inverted it and hangs below the handlebar and i actually prefer this setup and it's surprisingly it's it's worked quite well they're plastic but you know they work pretty well now the final one is the cargo package it's basically some kind of heavy duty, nice quality uh, metal baskets. If you're thinking you might be hauling some stuff around, this is a really 
a good package to consider because these bikes are actually made with pre-drilled and pre-tapped uh, mounting points and these baskets are actually designed specifically for this bike. So all of the hardware and everything mounts up uh, perfectly uh, with this kit. I don't know how much we'd use the front but I definitely use the back and you know you can mount these in either orientation either lengthwise or sideways it really just depends on what you do and you know it's going to be challenging if you plan on folding this up a lot now the front one's kind of interesting because it doesn't turn <laughs> with the front of the bike and you know it's just kind of awkward <laughs> till you get used to it and keep in mind that when you mount the one on the front you're going to have to reposition the light and it, they give you a little extension and a mounting point so you can mount the headlight here on the front. Well, if this uh, review was helpful to you in any way and you just wanna say thanks and maybe buy us a beer, then consider using the links that I'll put in the description below to shop for any of these accessory kits or the bikes themselves. And, or you could just go to rvwithtito.com slash electric. And you know, it is an affiliate link. So if you do end up buying something, then uh, yeah, we'll pop a cold one in your honor. But as always, I'd love to hear what you think about these bikes and anything about them. And you know, drop your comments, questions, and all of that stuff in the comments section below. You know what to do. So take care. I'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna take this little step through for a spin. I don't really get to ride it a whole lot. Take care. See ya. Woohoo!